Hey folks, I uh, had a couple of responses to the first video about the little electric Suzuki sidekick. So thought we'd come out and do a follow-up video today. It's a nice sunny day, uh, albeit pretty cold. Um, one of the first questions was whereabouts do I live? Um, and without getting too specific, I'm in a, a small mountain valley in Idaho, USA. Uh, it's the northwest part of the country. Uh, we have very cold winters here, uh, plenty of snow usually. Uh, right now we only have a little bit of snow so far this winter, but uh, temperature outside today is in the neighborhood of 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So that'll affect our results just a little bit today because we are going to do a driving video, which was another request that another uh, a viewer had had. Um, so the other thing to answer about that first question was regarding the weather and how the, uh, the little Suzuki handles bad weather. Um, I'll be up front and tell you I did not design it with the intent of being 100% waterproof, so it's not gonna be fording any deep water. I uh, probably won't be driving it in any terrible downpours, but we just don't get much of that around here. Um, I didn't go to the length of, of sealing every battery connection or building big sealed battery boxes for all the batteries. Um, but so far I have driven it in a little bit of mildly wet weather. You know, a little spray off the tires doesn't seem to cause any trouble. Um, but we'll see as we go. Uh, again, it's only been a couple of months of, of kind of deteriorating weather that I've been driving it in since I got it working. So uh, maybe more updates later on that. Uh, and then, of course, the other request was a driving video. So let's get to it. Um, right now, we're just sitting with the key switch turned on uh, here in the driveway. Uh, you can see the, the readout here that shows the uh, the ground speed, and that speed is based on the motor RPM, and it's it's calibrated for high range in the transfer case. Currently we're in low range because my driveway is steep, uh, so this would actually read about double our actual speed while we're in low range. Um, there is a, a battery indicator there. That's not a true state of charge meter. It's just a calibration based off of uh, uh, voltage and the amount of power that the controller has used, but it does not account for any other loads like the uh, electric heater or anything. Um, and then uh, in my helper's lap here is the laptop, which is connected to the controller right now with the uh, data monitoring software. And as we get going, you'll be able to see the, the current that the motor is pulling um, and uh, the, the couple other parameters there. I can't get every all the parameters on one screen, unfortunately, so you'll have to just basically be looking at current for now. Okay, so to start off, right down here in the console, I'll put the, uh, the direction switch in reverse and then take off the parking brake. And immediately we start to roll, and I really don't need to give but just a little bit of torque because we're on a downhill in reverse. But I'll go ahead and go to forward. Now one thing about this controller is it's, it has a hill hold function, but it's very complicated and it requires some inputs that I did not install. So I just usually handbrake while I'm on a hill like this and release as I hit the throttle. On the display here, you can see the percent throttle requested. Right now it's only about 15 or 20%. And uh, again, we're in low range, so that speed reading is double. And this right here that we're about to do is what I consider one of the best features of this this uh, Hyper 9 IS system, and that's the regen. I'm at a uh, medium regen setting right now, which is about 28% negative torque, and I'm coming down a 10% grade or so on my, my driveway and needing no brakes whatsoever. Um, it's about to stop me dead here at the bottom with regen alone, no brakes at all, which is really useful for an off-roader. Uh, there were some questions from a guy that's thinking about building some electric off-roaders. Um, that I think is one of the best off-road features with electric because you can turn up that region and really control your downhill speed. So there it just stopped us completely with no brakes at the bottom of the hill. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in high range gear now and go ahead and continue on down the road out of our little subdivision here. So if you want to go ahead and show the uh, read out there. We're going real slow still here, uh, about 10 miles an hour, and going to be going downhill, and you'll actually see the negative amps as we uh, regen down the hill a little bit here. This is not nearly as steep of a hill, and I'm in high range now, but again, no brakes. Um, usually only use the brakes to decelerate from a high speed on the highway or to come to a complete stop at an intersection. Uh, sorry for the shaking. There's a little bit of a washboard bumps on this dirt road. 
you'll be able to see it better when we get on the highway here in just a moment. I do have the hubs locked right now because there is snow on the ground, uh, but we're not in four wheel drive currently. Um, but those hubs being locked, I have noticed that does increase the power consumption just a little bit, driving the, uh, the front axle and the front drive line. So uh, the, the amp numbers that we see here may be a little higher than what we would see if it was uh, warm and dry and I had the hubs unlocked. Okay, so I'm about to turn onto a highway where the speed limit is 50 miles per hour. It's a nice straight flat section here. Uh, looks like no traffic right now. So we'll go take her on up to 50. And you, you may have heard a little vibration there. This motor has a torque flutter that occurs from a stop. And as soon as you get past about just a few hundred RPM, you don't notice it at all anymore. And it's just butter smooth. Okay, 30 miles an hour right there, still accelerating. And this is a real mild acceleration, not quite 50% throttle. Okay, there's 50 miles per hour, so I'm gonna back out of the throttle and you'll see the amps come down. And the warm weather was pulling about 140 amps at 50 miles per hour, but now that it's cold and we've got the uh, hubs locked, it's looking like we're well over 200 amps at 50 miles per hour. So that's an interesting uh, thing to note, that the, the difference in weather and the difference in driveline efficiency is a real thing, it makes a big, big difference in how they operate for these electric vehicles. It's 48 miles per hour. It doesn't take much torque. I'm still only about 20-25% torque to achieve this speed. But it does pull quite a bit of power. Okay, so we're, now we're going to go down a little gentle grade here and then turn around. And then we'll accelerate up this grade and you'll see, I'm going to do a little harder acceleration then and you'll see the amps come up really good. This controller is rated for 750 amps. Uh, I've got it fused at about 800. So I um, have to be a little careful how hard I push it because this is this vehicle is about the high end of the, uh, the weight rating for this, this uh, drivetrain, the, the motor controller combo. All right, I haven't hit the brakes yet. This is all regen slowing me down here. In fact, it doesn't look like I'm gonna to need to hit the brakes for the turn here. We're just gonna come into this little side road and pull around in a U-turn. Okay, okay, a complete stop here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and make the turn and then I'll get into the throttle pretty deep. Okay, so that was about 75 to 80% throttle. I'm gonna go ahead and back out of it a little bit now because we're damping pretty hard. And there's 50 miles an hour, actually 51 now. So, pretty strong acceleration considering there's no gear reduction other than the rear axle, which is about a five and a quarter to one in this little rig. That's straight through the transfer case, no transmission. Now one comment I'd make to the fellow who's thinking about building serious off-roaders uh, with electric motors, is if that were the case, I would not delete the transmission like I did on this one. Um, you're gonna want the, that gear reduction for the real low crawl speeds. You'll see in a few minutes whenever we go low range up the hill back to my house, that uh, there's still a little bit of a, how do I put it, it, it bogs just a little bit from a, a start when you're climbing a very steep hill in low range. So with the transmission, of course, you could multiply that torque another four times or whatever first gear is. That would really, really make it strong. Okay, cruising again at 50 miles per hour. And we're coming up on the turn back into my drive or my street. So I'll go ahead and regen down to that. You can see the negative amps. Actually, regen was a little too strong. I gotta give it a little throttle to get all the way to the intersection here. Just a little bit of break there, not much. All right. So 
So usually when I come back into my place, uh, the dirt road has just a little bit of a hill here. Just to make it easier on the system, I'll stop right here at the base of the hill and I'll put it in low range, which is just here on my right hand stick. The left hand stick is the uh, two wheel drive, four wheel drive. That's the, whoop, there was a little ice, spun out just a little. We may have to go to four wheel drive to get up the hill here in a minute. But uh, yeah, I put the twin stick kit on this transfer case so that I could run in two wheel drive low range during dry weather. And that's worked out really well. driveway so this is what we're about to do is about a 10% grade roughly maybe 15 it's pretty steep and uh, this is low range and I'm gonna do I don't know five miles an hour or so and you can watch the amps as I make this drive up the hill and this takes this is up to about 40 50 percent throttle which throttle position is basically torque request on this, this motor. So as you can see, without a transmission, um, serious off-roading in really steep terrain would be a bit of a challenge. Uh, this vehicle was just not built for that. It was built more for snow and just rough dirt roads, which we have a lot of around here. So coming to a stop, I just set the parking brake and put the uh, selector back in stop. And uh, that's that. So uh, hopefully that answered some of your questions. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good day.